travel tens of thousands of miles, building a grassroots army across Texas. Millions of dollars raised, 56,000 donors. MJ Hagar for Senate, the leader Texas needs now more than ever. She holds the most promise for voters tired of the failing DC politics. Her military experience makes her the fighter Democrats need. A disruptor who can bring the fight and a unifier who can reach across the aisle to get things done. And as MJ kicks into gear, Texas does too. Voter registration to 16.4 million despite the pandemic. And Texas is moving towards Democrats in the ratings. She's ready to fight in Washington. Jay Hager has been the top fundraiser by a relatively healthy market. It is a different race. She has a good story, and I think it makes for a compelling race in 2020. One of the top fundraisers in the state. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You didn't think I was going to let John off that easy, did you? Then there's John Cornyn with an approval rating underwater. He's been sort of an invisible man in Washington. We see some favorability ratings that, that don't look so good. You're actually lower than uh, President Trump, the governor, and, and Ted Cruz. And the coronavirus? Well, I think China is to blame because they're, the culture where people eat bats and snakes and dogs and things like that. The president has, I think, led well. If you don't have any symptoms of uh, the coronavirus, there's not a great reason to get tested. No one under the age of 20 has died of the coronavirus. That, that we don't still don't know whether children can get it and transmit it to others. That's ridiculous. Well, welcome to the general election, John. A brutal Texas re-election battle. Your toughest race yet in a changing Texas. And your last. Are you concerned at all with all this talk about Texas turning blue and... Well, I, I sure am. Saddle up, Texas, because the Senate race is in full swing. Texas is the biggest battleground state. And in 2020, we have the opportunity to turn our state blue up and down the ballot. We have the opportunity to expand access to affordable health care, finance our public schools, strengthen our economy, and take meaningful action on gun violence. There's so much more in the United States Senate. We have the opportunity to pave the way towards a more sustainable future at the Texas Railroad Commission. We have the opportunity to elect judges and the justices who will restore fairness, equality, and balance in our courts. We have the opportunity to shape the political future of Texas and repair the broken systems that disenfranchise working families in our great state. We have the opportunity to ensure that Texans in positions of power embrace empathy open minds and swing open the doors of possibility by working together and uniting behind our shared vision of a more inclusive world we will win back our state we will win because we have to we have to put an end to the hate the lack of access and the suffering we have to deliver on the fair shot that every texan deserves our cause our movement is about the restoration of justice and the expansion of opportunity none of this can be accomplished unless we work together in order to bring lasting change to Texas, we must work alongside every down-ballot candidate, every activist, and every Texas Democrat to continue building the largest democratic movement our state has ever seen. We're asking you to be a part of this historic fight. Together, we will create a Texas that we can all believe and thrive in. Together, we will save Texas and in turn, save the entire country. Join us. Join us. John, we need to talk. 
It's just not working out. Senator Cornyn, you misled us on the coronavirus. You voted against funding for masks and ventilators. And you're still trying to take away protections for people with pre-existing conditions. It's not us, Senator. It's you. You won't fight for us. And we found someone who will. I'm MJ Hagar, and I approved this message because 18 years She's traveled tens of thousands of miles. Good evening, Texas Democrats. My name is Cliff Walker, and I'm the Deputy Executive Director of the Texas Democratic Party. Well, folks, this is it. We're less than one week out. Uh, just two years ago, we came within 215,000 votes of winning statewide and electing Beto O'Rourke. Now, that may sound like a lot, but in Texas terms, that's peanuts. And since then, over a million new Texans have registered to vote more than five times the number that we would have needed to win back then. And those new voters, most of them are Democrats. And you better believe they're voting. You know, we've always said that Texas isn't a red state. It's a non-voting state. Well, it was, because that's no longer true. And while voting statewide is already happening at historic levels, voting is going absolutely gangbusters in Harris County and in the greater Houston area. And that's why I'm especially excited tonight to bring you a lineup of Houston area, Houston area luminaries, including our state party leadership, a crucial additional vote for a Democratic speaker in the Texas House, two of the top targeted congressional candidates in the country, two rock star new leaders of the Democratic delegation, and finally, our next US Senator, MJ Hager. Now, before we dive in, if you haven't voted already, go right now to mytexasvotes.com. And if you have voted, please right now tell everyone you care about, if it's your partner, your children, your uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, family, friends, frenemies, let them hear from you that you need to vote and that you need to go to mytexasvotes.com, make a plan, go vote early, and make your voice heard in this life or death election. Now, before we get all, to all of these amazing Texans, however, we are 
full of excitement. I am giddy about our special guest, who, although she does not hail from Texas, she is a great friend of Texas voters. You all know the great Stacey Abrams, who in her inspiring and historic campaign for governor, was part of the constellation of Democratic superstars who captured our attention in 2018 and helped recast Georgia into an undisputed battleground state. And now thanks to her groundbreaking, earth-shaking campaign, national Democrats are treading a new path to 270 electoral votes that runs through the Sun Belt alongside, of course, the great state of Texas. And most crucially, right after election day in 2018, she kept up the fight against those who had shown that they wouldn't hesitate to suppress the vote and undermine the will of an entire state to keep a lock on their own power. And fortunately, for every Texas Democrat out there listening, she strengthened us in our fight by investing early in the Texas Democratic Party so that we could build the most robust voter protection program in Texas history. Leader Abrams, thank you for everything you are doing in your power to ensure that elections are still a fair fight in this country. And thank you for being here with us tonight. Cliff, thank you so much for a very kind introduction, incredibly generous, but there's nowhere else I should be. I believe in Texas. I believe in the Sun Belt. I believe in the South. When I did not become governor in 2018, I traveled to Houston. Soon thereafter, I saw SEMA and I got to meet so many other extraordinary Texas women for Annie's List talking about what the future could look like. Because we know that one election can change things, but winning multiple elections, that's how you make the change permanent. I went to college in Georgia. I was, I was raised in Mississippi, came of age in Georgia, went to college there, but I went to graduate school in Austin, Texas. I understand that Longhorn Pride travels with you no matter where you go. But I also know that so much of the future of our country is going to be grounded in the South it's going to be grounded in the Sun Belt. And that means we've got to start building now for tomorrow. And so I'm here today because there's nowhere else to be. I was proud to be part of the extraordinary Powered by the People phone banking, 2.9 million calls made. I'm proud every time I get to be with MJ Hagar to talk about why she is the person to help us flip the Senate and change the future of America. And I'm proud of the congressional candidates, the state ledge candidates, those candidates who are stepping up to make the change we need in our great region and in this incredible state. Because you see, we've got choices to make. Over the next six days, we've got three choices to make. And I know I'm, I'm seeing Representative Sylvia Garcia, our great Congresswoman. I want us to understand what those choices are. The first choice, of course, is the choice of leadership. Do we want to stick with the stale, misleading, falsifying, calcified leadership that we have had for so long? Do we want to watch ourselves move backwards because we don't have the will or the belief or the power to move ourselves forward? We do not. Instead, we need the vibrancy that Texas can bring to our state legislatures, to our congressional leadership, to our U.S. Senate, and of course, the electoral college votes that you can use to propel Joe Biden into the White House. This is a choice about what kind of leadership we want, a leadership that relies on the ignorance of its people and the fears that their voices won't matter, or a leadership that believes in galvanizing those voices to be as loud as they can, as often as they can, because they believe that our voters are the way we make choices, the way we make change. I'm here because I believe that the leaders we need for Texas are right here on the screen, are right here in this rally. The second choice we have to make is do we vote? I know I'm preaching to a choir here, but the reality is this is not the easy question we have. There was a lot of conversation about the undecided voters we keep seeing in these polls. And I will tell you my secret or my, my suspicion. I don't believe these are voters who aren't sure about whether they want Joe Biden or Donald Trump. If they want MJ Hagar or John Cornyn. I think it's a choice of whether they believe their votes will matter this time. It's a question of whether they think their voices will count. When they watch the governor of your state take the time to steal their power by shutting down their ability to return drop, their envelopes to drop boxes. When they watch the attorney general go to court to limit access to the right to vote. 
when the evil triumvirate that seems to run Texas seems to think the only way they can run Texas into the ground is by ignoring the very people they are there to serve, then the choice we have to help people make is that the choice to vote is a choice for change, is a choice to embrace their power and know that voter suppression only works when we refuse, or sorry, when we accept it. We can fight back against voter suppression. That's what I've spent the last two and a half years trumpeting about. Because I know that you can't defeat an enemy you can't call out. And in Texas, we know that voter suppression has been the weapon wielded by the Republican Party for a generation because it's the only way they can hold on to power. And that stops now. That stops by turning out people to the polls, getting them to vote early, by recognizing that long lines is not a sign of enthusiasm, it's a sign of incompetence. It's a sign of disinvestment, it's a sign of voter suppression. But by staying in those lines, it's how we create the change we need. It's how we elect the leaders we need. And it's how we set the table for the change that is to come. So first, it's about choosing our leadership. Second, it's about choosing the right to vote. And then third, it's about choosing how we're going to spend the next five days. In the next five days, we can celebrate the polling that we see. We can pat ourselves on the back for having completed our absentee ballots and turned them in. We can thank, congratulate ourselves on what we've done to get early voting done in our household. But if we don't spend the next five days on the phone, calling up folks, asking them, not just are you going to vote, but what do you need to vote on? What are the issues in your life that you need people to hear? What are the concerns that you have that you need leaders to understand? If we don't spend the next five days texting folks we've forgotten about or we were trying to hide from, if we don't spend the next five days on social media trumpeting how powerful we are and how change is real if we make it real, then we are not doing our jobs. You see, I live in the South, in Georgia. You live in Texas. I spent today in Florida, three states that have amazing, vibrant populations, and three states that have refused to expand Medicaid in the face of a pandemic that is killing our people. We live in three states that if they erode the ACA, we know that our people will lose the very last handhold on health insurance and health care that they have because the people leading our states refuse to do the right thing. But if we can make certain that we send Joe Biden and we send MJ Hagar, that we pack Congress with new leaders from the state of Texas, then we can protect the Affordable Care Act. We can protect the people in our states. We can make certain that Texans get access to a public option so Greg Abbott can continue to be mean and spiteful and not expand Medicaid expansion, but Joe Biden and MJ Hagar will make certain that healthcare comes to Texas anyway. That's the choice we can make, but we've got to have the conversations so people understand what's at stake, but also how they are the answers to those questions. I was recently talking to a couple of young men here in Georgia called the Earth Gang, and they said something that has stuck with me. They said, the closer you get to the bottom of the ballot, the closer you are to home. So I'm here to rally for MJ Hagar. I'm here to rally for the top of the ticket, but I'm also here to rally for every single race on that slate. Texas, Texas may have gotten rid of straight ticket voting, but we know what a D looks like. And as long as we pick Democrats up and down the ballot, voting for every single thing we can, then we are voting for the values of democracy, the values of having a direct connection to our people, the values of ethics and telling the truth and believing in science and doing what's right for our people. We have the opportunity, Texas, to get it right this time, to change the world this time and to send people to Congress, to send people to the White House, to send people to the State House, to send people to the city and county levels who will do the work together of making Texas as strong and as vibrant as we all know it can be. I'm here tonight to say, Texas, it's your turn to make the choice. Choose leadership, choose to vote, and choose to help other people make the change because if we get that done, we will change the world. And so let's get it done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Leader Abrams. Thank you so much. I, folks, you heard it. This is the charge. We got to choose and what and choose particularly how we're going to spend these next five days. What are we going to do these next five days? We've got so much that's encouraging right now, but how do we keep the blinders up and make sure that we fight for all of the things that Leader Abrams just talked about? Because we can do it. It is within our grasp. It is so close. For years, we may have wondered, but now there's no question. It's 100% up to us. 
So we hear that passion and take that and run with it and make sure you do precisely what Leader Abrams said to do. Reach out to all of those folks and spend the next five days fighting as though we're five points behind. Because if we do, we are going to win. Thank you so much for being with us, Leader Abrams. You know, now let's, uh, let's start with some of our state party leadership right here in Harris County. Uh, I am proud to introduce my boss, our vice chair, Dr. Carla Braley. Dr. Braley is a political advocate, is an educational consultant, a professor of sociology, and the vice chair of our party, and a proud mother. So in addition to balancing and wrangling clients, politicos, students, family, she is a champion of excellence, challenges the status quo, asks the hard questions, seeks justice, all without apology. So without further ado, Dr. Braley, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Cliff. And I'm so not his boss, um, but we work very well together. So well that he, along with our great staff at Texas Democratic Party, is helping to turn this, this state blue. Um, and we are so happy to have all of you all. Um, I, you know, I'm telling everyone that, like our staff, everyone on this call, all of your staff, I know we are working so hard. And I say, well, you just got to work a little harder and a little harder because yes, we're almost there, but we're not there yet. And it's funny, everything I wanted to say, I think Stacey Abrams said it. Um, you know, I just, you know, I, I was a bit tardy to the call, you all, because I happen to be on the call with students who were talking about voting and why, why they need to vote. Very interesting discussion, you all. And it came up on leadership that yes, all of our leaders have a past, but luckily right now, some would say, some would say unlucky, our students can see the current leadership that we have. And I think with MJ on the ticket, with the current administration, or our, our next administration that's on this ticket, we can see that what we've experienced in 2020 alone is enough that we need to change our leadership. And that's why we're here today. We're working hard and, the, and, and hopefully if you're, not, if you're not yet exhausted, you're working so hard that you're like, oh my gosh, can I do some more? And the answer is yes. She talked to Stacey Abrams talked about leadership, but she also talked about what else can we do? We need to reach out and touch someone. I know that sounds very cliche, but the reality is we still have a lot of reaching that we have to do. We still have a lot of texting that we have to do. We still have a lot of phone banking that we have to do. We still have to go out and convince voters, as Stacey Abrams said, that their vote does matter. We have to make sure that everyone knows that yes, voter suppression is a problem, but one way to get rid of voter suppression is to vote. Believe it or not, I know it's like, that doesn't make sense, but the reality is when we vote, we make change. And I think many of us would agree that we need a change. We need, MJ, someone that understands that affordable health care is extremely, it's not just important, it's extremely important. It's also connected to, to poverty, it's connected to people's lives, and they have to be able to have access to health care and access to jobs so that they have a fair shot, so that their children will have a fair shot, so that our future will not be reminiscent of what we're experiencing now in 2020. I see our Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia, who started hi, who started, you know, you know, in Texas, and she's still in Texas, but now she's impacting our nation through policies that she's able to implement and work, not just with Democrats. We need, we need leadership to understand that yes, Democrats matter. We know that. But people matter more than any of our parties. People matter. We need leaders that understand that we can work across the aisle. 
And that is what I know MJ can do. She's shown it even as a campaign on her campaign trail. And that's what we have to really pay attention to. I see, you know, my friend Ann on the trail, Seema on the call. I won't start calling our names because I'll get in trouble. But the bottom line is the people that we see on this call, this is not our first time seeing them. This is not our first time understanding what they have done for people in their communities and how they worked with other leaders and how they've helped other people to get elected. They have been doing this work. And that's what we want. Students ask, well, how do I know right now? Judge on what you see or what you experience. That's facts. That's based on your lived experience. And so that's the leadership that we're trying, that we're not trying, that we will put in office. Because the reality is when Texas goes blue, the nation goes blue. And when this nation goes blue, we're that much closer to experiencing democracy and not just democracy for a few, but democracy for all. And everybody deserves a fair shot. Everybody deserves a fair shot at the American dream. And that's the leaders that we have with us today. And I'm so proud to serve as vice chair because it's one thing to stump around Texas just because we wanna win but we wanna win because we are the people's party. We wanna win so that we can serve people. And that's what it's all about, getting us a little closer to being the type of human beings we were created to be. And that is to serve. And it just so happened that we're serving through our leadership. So Cliff, thank you. Um, and MJ, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this program, but more so thank you that you've allowed me to be able to, to be a messenger and a messenger of experienced people. We have good leadership. That, that just makes the world of a difference, Cliff. So thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chair Dr. Carla Braley for reminding us of what we are fighting for and the quality of the leadership that we are bringing to the table as Democrats, as Texas Democrats. It's up and down the ballot. We're saying that it, it really is a perfect storm this moment. We've got this opportunity in front of us but if you don't have the right candidates at the right time, you can't really take full advantage of it, but we are so blessed that we do. And one candidate in particular, uh, who, who certainly comes to mind is a candidate that is running in what is arguably the top state house pickup opportunity for Democrats in 2020. That is Ann Johnson, our nominee in House District 134. She is a Get this, a former chief human trafficking prosecutor, a cancer survivor, a teacher, a small business owner, and she works in our criminal justice system as an attorney for many people who cannot afford a lawyer. Her career is distinguished by standing up for the most vulnerable in our community. And that's what she's gonna to bring to the Texas House. And thank you so much for being with us tonight. Cliff, thank you so much. I am absolutely honored to be here. I am so proud to be a Democrat. And when I look at all the speakers that are gonna be here for this rally tonight, it just shows who we are. It shows the diversity of who we are. It shows the leadership, it shows the fight, it shows the grit that we all can put in. And I'm really honored to be one of your state rep candidates. And I, in this Houston area, am along with Representative John Rosenthal, Representative Gina Kalani, and challengers Akila Basie and Natalie Hurtado. And it is absolutely critical that we get you all out to support all of us up and down the ballot in these state house races. We always knew that this was gonna be a critical election cycle with redistricting being up, meaning those of us that you elect in the house are gonna be those who are gonna determine what our state house, our state Senate and our congressional lines are gonna look like for a decade. So when we think about the fight that's being put on by our congressional candidates, the fight that was won in CD7 by now Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher this last cycle and what it took to do that, we are talking about balancing out that power in redistricting and stopping Governor Abbott, stopping Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick from gerrymandering lines to ensure that Republicans win before we ever go to the ballot box. And that's another form of this voter suppression. And so the first line of defense for us for this decade is in this house where we need nine seats. We also have seen in COVID, the absolute failed leadership of the Republican party, the legislature and Governor Abbott who have gone along with Trump, who continued to make mask partisan. And in that respect, 
Literally, Texans have paid the price for that partisanship with their lives. It didn't just start there. It started with the Republican leadership denying Medicaid expansion in Texas, one of only 11 states in the nation that have refused Medicaid expansion, leaving us with millions of uninsured and the highest rate of uninsured children in the nation. It has left us with four of the top 10 mass shootings in the United States and a Republican legislature who's failed to address common sense gun reform. It has left us with an economy that has not been built for tomorrow, has not been built around the probability and possibility of us being an energy leader in renewables. It absolutely needed to take that step. And it puts us in a position today with a down budget, with the threat that Republicans will do what they do every time they have a budget crisis. They cut from the area of which we have the biggest amount and the most need, and that's public education. When we flip the Texas House, we not only fight to ensure this battle for the next 10 years in our lines, but we fight to ensure that healthcare and public education is insured for Texans across the board. I am proud and honored to be on with this group. And I know at every level of candidate that you're seeing, we are up for that fight. Thank you so much for having me on. I look forward to us having success in November, flipping the Texas House across the board, including with MJ in the Senate. So thank you again for letting me be on this evening. Thank you, Anne. And, you know, Leader Abrams mentioned the evil triumvirate. Well, we're going to have the first crack in that armor when we have a Democratic speaker that we're able to elect when we flip the Texas House. And it's going to be thanks to adding in new Democratic voices like Anne's. You know, she's absolutely right when it comes to making progress on Medicaid expansion, on gun safety, on renewables. We need Democratic leadership right now. And thankfully, we can get it. And it's not just at the state house; it's a crucial, crucial level. But we can also expand our congressional majority, and we're going to do that in congressional district two with our next guest, Seema Lajavardian. So Seema is a lawyer, a mom of two, a breast cancer survivor, a political activist, and she's called Houston home for more than thirty years. After fleeing the political upheaval of the Iranian Revolution, her family immigrated to the United States for their shot at the American dream. When she settled in Houston, she became a local leader in cross-cultural dialogue, bringing Texans of all backgrounds and faiths together for the cause of social justice. And as an activist, she's also worked, and I can vouch for this, worked tirelessly to turn Texas blue and elect candidates across the board, up and down the ballot. Seema, thank you for everything that you've done and thank you for being with us tonight. I'm so honored to be here with everyone. Thank you for inviting me and so excited with all the energy. Uh, you know, I'm running to unseat uh, Dan Crenshaw, who's Trump's number one enabler here. And I fled political chaos and revolution and came to this beacon of hope with a few faded photos uh, in a little suitcase and a bunch of big dreams. You know, I studied hard, became a lawyer and moved to Houston. I started a family, survived cancer and gave back to my community. We never took this American dream for granted. And I talk a lot about defying the odds because, you know, as a breast cancer survivor, I had to overcome diagnosis with really high quality, affordable health care. As a small business owner, I understand the tough choices that our families are facing. And as an immigrant who fled political chaos, I understand the value of what freedom and democracy means. And now is the time that we need to defy the odds together. We're living in a nation where families are losing their livelihood, businesses are shuddering, hundreds of thousands have perished from a virus that the president and his enablers should have foreseen. And they've been playing, you know, just spreading lies and disinformation and trying to cut our health care in the middle of it. We're living in a nation where millions are protesting injustice and brutality. And the president and his enablers are just not listening to them and wanting submission without any kind of progress. And we're living in a nation that we may feel that our voices are not being heard, but I know and I've seen it that together we do defy the odds and that is why we need different leaders. We need leaders who will make diversity the expectation, not the exception. We need leaders who bring us together and not tear us apart. And we need leaders who fight for healthcare, understand what an important thing it is, and make sure that we fight for our most vulnerable and protect our economy. No matter what the obstacles are, I know that with all this incredible group of leaders in Texas, with MJ leading us, we can defy the odds together and make this change. 
you know, this is, I came here once upon a time as a little girl, remembering America with, you know, in from my grandmother's closet with these big dreams of what this country is. And now I want to give back to this incredible country that we are all living in because everything is at stake right now. Everything that we have fought for is at stake. This is the most important election of our lifetime. Every single vote matters. We have five days to go and we can flip Texas. We can flip the 38 electoral votes with MJ on top of the ticket when you vote down the line for everybody and make sure that we protect our state house and change Texas with it and hand it over to our vice president and Kamala and make sure that we have a country that we are all proud of. So I just can't tell you how proud I am to be here. I can't emphasize like everybody else how much every single vote matters. Let's win every seat down and up the ballot. Make sure you take at least two or five or 10 of your friends. Tell them to go vote, make calls, make texts. This matters a lot and can't wait to win this. And with MJ on top of our ticket, I know we can do this. So thanks for having me today. Thank you, Seema, for being with us here tonight. You know, I, I cannot wait to have your voice in Congress. Uh, we, everything that you are saying right now, we are sorely missing that from whatever is happening on the other side. We won't even mention his name, but this is within our grasp. Again, this, we have an opportunity to elect someone of the quality of SEMA and Congressional District 22, uh, Congressional District 2, rather. Uh, so very, very, very excited about that personally as a Democrat. Now, I did mention Congressional District 22, uh, because we actually do have someone who is running in Congressional District 22 has taken that district, which was thought of historically as quintessential red Republican territory, and has brought it within the reach of Democrats in 2020. That's Sri Preston Kulkarni, uh, who is running to represent that district. He spent actually more than a decade fighting for American values abroad in the Foreign Service, but then he came back home because he wanted to continue serving his country by running for Congress. Sri is an impressive candidate in all respects. And he, he personally speaks, at, I believe, at least six languages and actively campaigns in six. And that, that's crucial in this district because that means he's able to reach out to new voters and connect with people across the political spectrum, across all variety of backgrounds and what is one of, if not the most diverse district in America, not simply in Texas, but in the country. And that district is one of the most competitive. So Sri, thank you for being with us here tonight. The floor is yours. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Cliff. And, and I, I mean that uh, personally and sincerely, you were there with us at the very beginning of this. And, and many people on the line might not know, you're the one who convinced me actually, when I was trying to decide what to do after spending my life serving overseas, how, how do we actually fight back? How do we how do we uh, address these issues, the kind of things that go beyond Republican and Democrat? You know, see, seeing my own government attacking African Americans, the LGBT community, Latinos, women, uh, Muslims. The, the final straw for me was the Charlottesville Nazi rally. And everybody has their own path, how they come here. But for me, that, that convinced me that the most patriotic thing to do would be to come home and, and to serve right here. And as you mentioned, Cliff, this was not thought of as an opportunity. This was Tom DeLay's old district, the architect of the Republican Party. This wasn't even ranked in the top 100 races in the country when we started. But the interesting thing about our districts is that we're the fastest growing in the country and we're the largest district by population now in Texas 22. But one quarter of us here are immigrants. And I said, why aren't we reaching out to immigrants? And I was told by some people that we don't reach out to immigrants, we don't bother because immigrants don't vote. And the easiest way to lose an election is to talk to people who don't vote. Well, the easiest way to never get change is to keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Um, actually, uh, Cliff, I speak six languages, but our team, we recruited from every major immigrant community. We're communicating in 27 different languages right now ac across our district. Um, and the result of that was that we were able to get 30,000 people to show up in 2018 who hadn't voted for president in 2016. We got within 4.9 points of a district that had been won by 35 points just four years earlier and 14,000 votes. And in between, in this district alone, we've registered 69,000 new people since 2018 to now. And the truth is, 
This is the way that we address these problems, not with greater anger. And, and it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the, the, the bigotry, the division spreading across America, or the conspiracy theories that are affecting us, the anti-science elements that, that are plaguing us right now, where doctors have to, have to diagnose coronavirus patients, and they're being told literally that they don't, the patients don't believe them. The doctors are just trying to pad their numbers because they don't like the president. Or whether we're talking about our democratic rights being taken away, our right to vote being threatened because the other party actually wants fewer people to vote. The answer to all of this is more inclusion. When, when students are being terrorized in their schools, we don't get mad at gun owners. We get more students involved in the political process. And we have, we have seen record turnout here among youth voters. When, when women's rights are being threatened, we don't get angry at men. We get more women involved in the political process. When immigrants are being demonized like they are every single day, the answer is to get more immigrants involved in the political process. All of this, this inclusion, this is the answer because as Seema said, everything is on the ballot. Our economy is on the ballot. The education of our children is on the ballot right now. Our health, our very lives are on the ballot. And, and the way that we are going to resolve all of this is by our participation. There has been a dam in Texas, a dam of voter suppression for too long, but that dam just broke. Te Texas was never a red state. Texas was a non-voting state. That is not true anymore. We have broken all records. We are number one in the country in voter turnout. We've broken records for youth turnout, for immigrants, for first time voters. That is how we are gonna set an example for the rest of the country of how we rise to great challenges here in Texas. Because we know here that a challenge is not an opportunity to divide further, it is an opportunity to unite further. And that's what we're gonna show the rest of the country on November 3rd. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you so much, Shree. And you know, th this is emblematic of what we are doing as Democrats in the great state of Texas. We're doing it bigger, better, smarter, not 16 languages, 27 languages, not just, you know, register a few thousand voters, a few hundred voters, 69,000 voters. You know, th this, is, this is the spirit of what we are doing. We, we are the best. We strive to be the best. And in a very short period of time, what we're seeing in your district, we're seeing all across this great state, more registrants, more participation, more diversity, more democratic voting. So, Incredibly excited for you for everything that you have done in your district so far and everything that you're going to do when you're elected to Congress. Uh, you are going to be serving, incidentally, with our next guest, who's uh, Representative Lizzie Fletcher. Uh, United States Representative Lizzie Fletcher represents Texas's seventh congressional district in Houston. She was elected just last cycle, but in a decisive victory over a nine-term Republican incumbent, becoming the first woman ever and the first Democrat to represent that district as its job. Whether it's helping lower the cost of prescription drugs, passing a bill to lower healthcare premiums, leading on matters relating to energy, she has, as a freshman, as a new member of the Congress, distinguished herself as someone who can work with all the stakeholders that you need to, to get things done, even in Washington, D.C. Congresswoman, Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Well, thank you so much, Cliff. I am delighted to be with you, delighted to be with everyone. I'm just really excited to be with y'all tonight with this diverse group of Texans coming together for one reason. We are at a defining moment in our country's history and Texas is leading the charge in the fight for the future of our country. As you said, as someone who turned a congressional seat from red to blue in 2018, I know firsthand that winning as a Democrat in Texas, it's not just possible. It's not just something we're talking about. It is something that is happening. Together with my friend Colin Allred in Dallas, we flipped not one, but two seats in Texas in 2018. And in 2020, we'll do it again. As long as we work together from today until election day to make it happen, the folks who are on this call from our area and people across Texas are gonna wind up in the House of Representatives and in the Texas legislature and in the White House. And it is so exciting to be a part of this momentous time in our state's history. You know, what I learned through my campaigns in 2018 and again this year is really that electoral success takes a coalition. And Texas Democrats are a coalition. And we've been doing the hard work on the ground to be ready for this moment that is in front of us. 
you know, we've seen the results. In recent years, we've swept the largest counties with Democratic leadership. And this year, we have the opportunity to flip the state house, expand our congressional delegation, flip the Senate seat, and deliver 38 electoral votes to send Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the White House. Our growing and diverse state deserves leadership and representation that will do the right things for Texans, for all Texans. People, leaders, elected officials who will work to improve the lives of Texans and Americans. For too long, and especially in recent years, we have seen the divisiveness and the dangerous policies from Austin to Washington. And Texans deserve better. Americans deserve better. And it's time to elect people who will bring us together, who will, as you said, Cliff, work to bring people together and who will work for all of us. And this election will define whether we move toward a more collaborative, inclusive Texas, a more collaborative, inclusive America, or whether we remain in the divisive and politically volatile environment that we find ourselves in right now. I know which side I'm on. I know which side my colleagues that have already spoken and who will speak are on. I know which side MJ Hager is on. I know which side Texas Democrats are on. They're on our side. And it's time to make sure that Texas Democrats win up and down the ballot next Tuesday. We are seeing here in Harris County the excitement, the energy, and the commitment to making sure that our voices are heard. And by electing Democrats, we'll make sure that our voices are heard not only on election day, but every day, because that is our commitment to represent the people of the great state of Texas. And I know we can do it. We can bring this home. So let's out-organize and outwork the opposition. There is less than a week left, and this week could make all of the difference. So I'm so glad to be with you tonight, and I'll be so glad to be with all of you again, not just next Tuesday night, but every day after that, working together for Texas and for our country. Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher, thank you so much. I hope you all listen carefully to the words that she was saying, coalitions, bringing people together, inclusion, representation. Contrast that with what's happening on the other side. Why do we talk about those, those words in those ways? It's because that's how you govern. That's how you actually accomplish things and get things done for people. We don't hold power simply to hold power. It's not power for power's sake. It's power to deliver. And you know, our next guest has been doing that over a lifetime and has a defined her entire career by servant leadership. Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia, while we're on the subject of trailblazers, you know, she's served this community from working as a social worker, as a legal aid lawyer. She was the director and the presiding judge of the Houston Municipal System as a city controller in Houston, a Harris County commissioner, and then to the state Senate. And now, and here, before, before I mention this, just one quick fun fact about the United States Congress in Texas. Believe it or not, until 2018, Texas had never elected a Latina to the United States House of Representatives. Until 2018, and then in 2019, when Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia was sworn into the United States House, becoming one of two Latinas elected to represent Texas alongside her congressional classmate, Representative Veronica Escobar of El Paso. Congresswoman Garcia, so happy to have you with us tonight. Well, thank you so much for that great introduction and thank you for the footnote of, you know, my place in history, always tied to Veronica Escobar, my good friend, my comadre from El Paso. And, you know, I, I couldn't have think of a better person uh, to share number one with. Uh, and thank you to Lizzie Fletcher. Uh, I know she's working hard and I know she's going to win re-election. Uh, but for all of those of you on the call, send her more money, send her more help. It always uh, is a good thing to do to make sure that we get that done. So for us, you know, let me tell you, I'm beginning to think that there's something in the water in Texas, and it's not oil, it's the Democrats fighting their way uh, to make sure that we turn Texas blue. And how great for Stacey Abrams to, to kick us off tonight, and, and uh, you know, Seema and Shree 
are going to be a huge addition to our Harris County delegation. And I look forward to having them both uh, join us. And of course, we know that we have also targeted races with Wendy Davis and Mike Siegel in the Arston area, Gina Ortiz Jones in San Antonio area, Candace Valenzuela in the North Dallas area, June Oliver in Fort Worth, and Lulu Shikali in North Texas area. I mean, y'all, Texas is ground zero. So do not stop. You need to work every single minute and every single hour between now and next Tuesday. Remember early voting ends on Friday, but then we just kind of, I don't even want to say a break because the weekends are not for breaks. It's to get recharged, energized, and ready for Monday and Tuesday, the big day. You know, over 8 million Texans have already voted. And for us in Harris County, as Lizzie mentioned, we hit the 1 million mark you know, last week, I think we're going to probably be at, we're probably already at a million and a half, but we got to make sure that those numbers are record numbers in urban centers, but we got to make sure we reach out and that we get the rural areas and the smaller areas to vote for Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and MJ Hager. They need to know that this is a time for change. Texas is, is, is high energy right now, and there's a lot of excitement. We want to make change. We got to make sure that everybody does actually get out and vote. Because I'm going to tell you, I want a leader at the White House. I don't want a liar. I want someone with a heart at the White House. Not somebody who is cold and is going to separate babies uh, from the families or put them in cages. I want to make sure that we have someone who will stand watch and stand with me uh, when I pursue uh, justice for Vanessa Guillen and to end sexual harassment in the military. And when I think of those things, it's not just making the change by voting for Joe Biden. We have to have a Senate that's going to be there to support the president in conjunction with the, with the House, because we know Leader Nancy Pelosi is going to be there lockstep helping Joe Biden. We need the Senate to be doing the same. We need Schumer to become, you know, the leader uh, there. Can you all, you know, I'm going to digress just one sec. Can you believe that McConnell said today that he was doing so great that he was up there now with LBJ as a majority leader? You know, we're Texans. We know LBJ. McConnell is no LBJ. But I tell you what, if we get MJ Hager in the Senate, and we get the majority in the Senate, we can have another LBJ to be working together with Joe Biden. That's why we need to make sure that we continue to work to elect MJ Hager. You know, MJ's a fighter. You know, it's not just about her ads that she looks really tough riding the motorcycle or talk, talking about her tattoos. Tattoos, it's about what she says and what she says she's going to do. And we know that we can take it to the bank. You know, MJ knows that Texans are hurting and it's because of the failure of this White House. She's going to be there to make sure that we have a plan and a plan for Texas. And she's going to make sure that the priority is in closing bars, not closing opportunities for people like Greg Abbott has been doing. You know, Texas have lost a lot of jobs. We've got a whole bunch of people afraid of what may happen next. We're scared of what happens and whether or not our small businesses will be open. And when you think about what the, Trump has been doing, who has been standing right next to him and staying quiet? John Cornyn. That's why we need MJ there. We need a fighter. We need someone who can charge in and take over and make sure that we speak up and that we work together to make sure that our communities are safe and healthy, that we can safely return back to school, that we can safely return back to work, and that we can put Texans back at the top. You know, it's almost embarrassing. Texas leads the nation in the number of civil rights complaints. Now we're surprised. Now Texans are leading in the number of voter suppression tactics. We're having record numbers of turnout, but we're also having record numbers of lawsuits. We're having record numbers of incidents of 
things that they're trying to do to stop us from voting. So we got to make sure, again, that we have someone who's going to speak up and fight for Texas, and that's MJ Hager. So we need someone who will stand up to Trump and to McConnell and make sure that we get things done for Texas. So my friends, I'm here to tell you tonight, vote Democrat from the top to the bottom. And when you do that, don't forget that we need change not only in the White House, but also in the Senate, and that's with MJ Hager. So I'm here tonight to tell you to please work hard, hard, hard. If you wake up on Wednesday morning and you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, guess what? You didn't work hard enough. I want you to work so hard that when you get up Wednesday morning, you're going to go like, oh, my God, it's finally over. I can sleep late. That's the feeling I want to see you do. Remember, we want leaders, not liars. We want someone who's going to stand up and make sure that Texas remains strong and that Texans are protected. With that, I yield back and um, get out and vote, wear your mask, and make sure that we turn this state blue. Thank you all very much, and God bless. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you, Congresswoman. We, we, I'm just so humbled to be in the presence of all these history makers and change makers. And you know, we're we're gonna we've been talking about one particular fighter all this evening, and. You know, fortunately for us, we do have an MJ Hager who's leading the charge at the top of this ticket. You know, you're, you're right. We can elect a new president. We can flip the state house. We can expand our congressional majority. But we got to take that gavel away from Mitch McConnell. We got to do that. And if we can do that, there's so much that we can deliver on. And that's why, you know, you, you have heard her name many times this evening because, you know, you, you you, we need, uh, my mother may be listening, so I want to, I, I may get in trouble, but we need a, uh, an ass kicker and a, a boot licker, All right? So that don't, don't, don't tell my mom if, she, if she's not listening, but it's the truth. And it's, you know, we, we've had the alternative for so long, but Texans are ready for a decorated combat veteran, a working mom, and someone who's going to take the fight against Senator Cornyn. And if you've seen that debate, you know that she's not afraid to bring the fight to Senator McCorn. She served two, three tours in Afghanistan as a combat search and rescue and medevac pilot, and then successfully took on the bureaucrats in DC to open up jobs for literally hundreds of thousands of women in the military. If you're tired of politics as usual, and you wanna bring a little more Texas to Washington, DC, then guess what MJ Hager is too. And she's energized by you and she's energizing Texans just like you all across the state who are joining this mission. MJ, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Cliff. You guys are doing such amazing work over there at the state party. I just wanna thank you for your tireless efforts. Um, it's gonna pay off, you know? I, I gotta tell you guys, I feel I am equal parts exhausted and enthused. I mean, I am just running on pure kind of adrenaline at this point um, because I am seeing something amazing happening across the state. I mean, I, you know, I grew up in a very rural area. I was surrounded by voter apathy and, and we didn't talk a lot of politics and there weren't a lot of candidates talking to us and a very small number of people were making our choices for us. And I've heard people say, you know, if you don't vote, don't complain. I think it's more, I've been telling people, if you don't vote, you're telling us you're okay with other people making the decision for you. You're just gonna step aside and let other people decide for you. Cause I gotta tell you, Texans do not like to have other people speak for us. And so, you know, I just wanna thank everybody that has been pouring so much of their work into this up and down the ballot. Um, I gotta call out Ann Johnson for a second and just say how, um, how brilliant and amazing she is and what a great servant leader she is. Because um, I remember when I met Ann and I didn't know she was running for the state house and she was grilling me and she wanted to know if, if she, you know, had somebody that she was going to throw her support behind and that she could get behind. And I think that's so important that we're not just asking for your votes because we're Democrats, y'all. We have a slate of candidates that are fighters that are going to work hard. I got to tell you, we got an opportunity. I keep hearing a lot of things about the state turning blue and flipping blue. I don't want to poop with anyone's party. Sorry, we talk a lot about poop in my house. I got a, th a three-year-old and a six-year-old that are boys. So if, if Cliff's mom's watching, I'm sorry. Um, but I don't want to be a party pooper, but I got to tell you, 
that t- tells me like flipping the state blue means that Democrats somehow have the advantage, go into these elections with the advantage, like it's ours to lose. And we've got at least five years to a decade where we're going to be having to work and earn these races. Now, the good news is we can earn them. We share a lot more Texas values. We are fighting for rural Texas. We're fighting for access to education and health care. We're fighting for jobs. We're fighting for opportunity. And I think more and more people are waking up to that. But we're going to have I believe we're going to win solidly up and down the ballot. We're going to have the White House. We're going to have the legislative. We're going to have some work to do on the judicial. But we're going to have a couple of years to really kick some serious <laughs> butt and deliver some serious results for people. Um, Sheila Jackson Lee just called me the job creating mama. And that was not a nickname. That was a charge. She gave me a job. She gave me a job to do. And I accept that because we're going to have a few years before that pendulum swings back over. It just always swings, you know, and right now it's over here with us. But that pendulum will swing back over if we fail people. So we have an opportunity to create jobs, to keep fighting for regular people. Cliff was talking about and and, uh, uh, Congresswoman Fletcher was talking about, you know, um, having a responsibility. And and Cliff was saying, you know, power isn't just to have power. If we use our positions, if we flip the state house and we do real good, if we demonstrably improve people's lives, we get infrastructure investment, we create jobs, we get people access to health care. We are going to be in a position to impact this state and this country for decades. And I am really looking forward to that. I take it very seriously to be effective day one, the minute that we hit the ground running, um, to be alongside, uh, you know, amazing leaders like um, Congresswoman Garcia. I can't wait to fight with you on the um, on the on the Guyenne bill and and to to do work. I mean, I'm a I'm a military sexual assault survivor myself. It's why I keep saying that we need to elect people that have experienced the challenges of everyday people because we've got people making decisions for us that largely have lived a lot of their lives in a position of privilege. We need to elect more women of color, more people of color, diverse backgrounds, lift up down ballot candidates. And, and we have a lot of hard work ahead of us. In fact, um, I would argue, you know, we're gonna celebrate on the night of the third, um, but we are gonna get right back to work on the morning of the fourth because we have a lot of work to do. We have a short window in which to deliver and show people that we can be a different type of leader than what Texas has had for decades. And, and I believe wholeheartedly we are gonna rise to that challenge. We are going to get immigration reform better in line with our American values. We are going to take aggressive action on climate change in a way that creates jobs across our state to where we can lead in the energy industry. We are going to get action on common sense gun safety legislation that is not a threat to our second amendment rights. I'm a gun owner. We've been sold these false choices for so long. We have such a great opportunity to do so much good and to really serve people. And I don't think Texans are familiar with that. I mean, some places have great representation, but not widely, largely across the state. We're going to show Texas what it's like to have a servant leader, to have a responsive elected official, to have someone who wants to be held accountable and wants to collaborate on solutions, not just me, but up and down the ballot. I'm so excited and honored to be working with this amazing slate of candidates. Um, You know, people like Dr. Braley, um, who have done just tireless work, who I have been so grateful for her insight and for her advice. And I'm looking forward to working with her as we piece together, you know, policy and legislation that really helps communities throughout the state. Um, I'm just, I'm so grateful for the amazing team that, that has been delivering these results. You can join this team. You can join this team, pick a candidate. It doesn't have to be our race, but our race is certainly taking volunteers. Pick a candidate you can go work for, make phone calls, send text messages. It's huge, y'all. We we were dealt a gut punch in 2014 when, when Wendy Davis didn't become our governor, but we were able to stand on the foundation that was laid during that race on, on some of the data that was gathered and the, the phone calls that were made and people started paying attention and thinking about voting Democrat. We were able to stand on that in 2018 and really reap the benefits of that and gather even more data. And as much as some of those losses, including Beto's race, were kind of a gut punch too, that enabled us to be where we are now. Every election cycle is another layer of that foundation. And when you phone bank and you text message and you get five of your friends to go vote with you, it is not just about the results of the election you're voting in. 
Yes, that's the primary thing, but you are getting people the habit pattern of being a voter. You're increasing civic engagement. You are getting people involved in a way that makes our democracy healthier. Even when Republicans turn out in greater numbers, it's healthier because they're gonna pick better Republicans. They're gonna pick better Republicans that are more reflective of their values. It's, our democracy is healthier the more people we drive out to the polls and y'all in Houston are setting records. And I gotta tell you, I'm just so excited to be a part of it. And I thank you for all of the tireless efforts and the work that we are putting in to protecting our kids, to delivering uh, leadership that can get our reputation back on a global stage and can make sure that we continue leading and we continue being the leaders of the free world. We continue leading from Texas. Right now we're leading in places like you know, uh, bad COVID numbers, lack of access to health care, uh, voter suppression, but we should be leading in jobs, leading in the energy industry and in the next chapter of the energy industry and leaning into that. We can be leading the nation and we should be because we're Texas, damn it. And we are the best state in the country. We just have to show people who we are. And the way we show people who we are is by the results in the ballot box. And we lay the foundation for the next cycle because I gotta tell you, there's some people on the ballot next cycle who are not doing us any favors in Texas. Greg Abbott is up for re-election and he knows it. And the work we put in now is going to help us unseat him later. So thank you for everything y'all are doing. Keep up the great work. Keep up the enthusiasm. We maintain this momentum. We're going to win. Our opponents are desperate. They're lying. They're, they're throwing as much spaghetti on the wall as they can to see what's going to stick. And, and they know their numbers look the same as our numbers. And we see the writing on the wall, y'all. This is our moment. So thank you for being a part of it. Let's keep up the momentum, keep kicking some serious tail, and we're gonna have a lot to celebrate on the night of November 3rd, and then the real work starts the next day. Thank you so much. Thank you, MJ. This, folks, is our moment, as MJ said. This is our moment. If we can keep up this momentum, and we absolutely can, we're gonna win up and down the ballot. We're gonna elect all of these servant leaders that you just saw this evening. You wanna, Decision maker with actual lived experience, do everything you can. You want a job created mama? Do everything you can. As Leader Abrams said earlier today, earlier tonight, we got five days. How are you going to spend the next five days? MJ and Congresswoman Garcia put out the charge. Let's leave it all out on the field. And even if we are fighting on fumes, we can win the most historic election of our lifetime on fumes. We're gonna get it done. So keep on fighting, keep on steering folks to mytexasvotes.com. Make sure that anyone that you know that you can text, that you can call, you can Facebook message, Twitter DM, smoke signal. It's it's too late to, to write a handwritten letter, but you know, by courier, whatever you can do, make sure that every single person that you know is coming out to vote because every single vote matters more than it ever has before. Thank you all. Five days to make a little history. Let's get it done. Have a good night.